You're locked in to Fran Harris's Women's Basketball TV with WNBA champion, NCAA champion, sports announcer, and entrepreneur, Fran Harris. Asia Wilson is still the best basketball player in the WNBA. It's official. Some of y'all were calling for Chrissy Side's job. Now look at Indiana and Caitlin Clark. What y'all got to say about that? Serving up the best in women's hoops news in T. I'm not calling Angel Reese Bayou Barbie anymore. She is rebounding Barbie. Come on, girl. No cap. So buckle up, Buttercup. Here's the show. Uh Uh-oh, the rest of the country is going, what is happening if Indiana starts heating up? We didn't think Indiana was going to do this. We didn't think Caitlin Clark was this. Indiana needs to blow up their roster. Indiana needs to fire their coaches. Indiana, Indiana was the bane of most of y'all's existence at the beginning of this season. Of course, except for the Caitlin Clark fans. They, they, They seem to have had a crystal ball to to know what was going to happen since Caitlin Clark was in the mix. Okay, that sarcasm, just in case, just in case anybody's missing that, that sarcasm. But the reality is Indiana needed that break, that Olympic break more than anybody in the league because what we're seeing now is the potential played out. It's the potential manifested. Those of us who've watched basketball for a while, whether it's women's, men's, college, high school, whatever, We know that when new people get together, new people and pieces are added to a roster, there is almost always a learning curve. There is almost always a gestation period. There is almost always a transition period for everyone. Not just for the new people coming in, but for the people who were there already who are now having to infuse these new talents and and abilities into their lineups and their regimes. We knew it was going to take a minute for Indiana to become the Indiana that people are hoping they would become with the addition of Caitlin Clark. And so while it's early, it's still early, it is encouraging to see the, the game after the break and how well the Indiana Fever played. And why do I say that they needed the, the break more than anybody during the Olympic Games? Because they needed to get to know each other at a different level. Right? You're like, well, everybody got new players. Everybody has some new players. Yeah, but the world wasn't really looking at Connecticut. The world wasn't looking at Atlanta. The world wasn't looking at Seattle because because of who they brought into the program. No, let's let's keep it a whole buck. The world was looking at Indiana because of Caitlin Clark. And because worldwide, global, international, planet eyes were on Indiana, we needed to see what would happen if Indiana actually got some time to to mesh and and get to know one another with the level of talent and eyeballs that they were bringing to their organization. And if the first game back was any indication of what we can expect from Indiana, the league better be on notice. The rest of the teams in the league better be on notice. If they play as well as they played versus Phoenix the other day, if they keep doing that, Indiana will probably be in that in the middle of the pack, literally five or six, if they keep playing the way they are playing. So let's talk about the way they were playing. People have talked about the shooting ability of Caitlin Clark. I'm going to put a pause on that. Because if you know anything about basketball, if you know anything about what makes teams successful, if you know anything about the ability to be a dynamic player in a basketball league, then you have your eyes on Kelsey Mitchell, who, by the way, played at the Ohio State University, has always been a baller. Kelsey Mitchell is the most dynamic shooter in the WNBA. We've got merch. Yes, we do. We've got merch. How about you? Be sure to check out the link in the description of this video for our t-shirts, caps, and other merchandise. And now, back to the show. Kelsey Mitchell is the most dynamic shooter in the WNBA. And that's including Caitlin Clark. 
You want to talk about dynamism? You want to talk about an all-around and all-faceted shooter? That is Kelsey Mitchell. Yeah. Mid-range, pull-up, drive and, and kick, three-pointer, in transition. If you if you got somebody and you're like, hey, you got a daughter or a son who's like, I need to, I want to become a dynamic shooter, you need to pull some tape of Kelsey Miss Mitchell. That's what you need to do. There is no shot that Kelsey Mitchell has not mastered. So clearly I'm going to have to do a whole video and mixtape just on Kel Kelsey Mitchell. But I'm talking about the Indiana Fever right now, and I had to say that because I'm looking and I'm going, people, I, the league is not sleeping on Kelsey Mitchell. The players know. The players know what time it is. But for some reason, you know, why do we say that? Why do we say for some reason? We know the reason. But because Caitlin Clark is there, Kelsey Mitchell is once again being overshadowed. And at the same time, she's getting elevated, right? So people are going, Kelsey, who is Kelsey Mitchell? Where'd she come from? What? Have y'all been watching women's basketball? Kelsey Mitchell, been Liddy. Been the ball. Been all that. I'm using all the, de the decades words. She's been all that. Been Liddy, been the bomb, been the sh Yeah, she's been all of that for a long time. But I digress because we're talking about fever. This team is coming together. This team put on a highlight reel. It was literally like an all-star game watching them play Phoenix. They were handling Phoenix like Phoenix was a minor league basketball team. That's the way the Fever played. So when you talk about teams getting the opportunity to come together, and Caitlin Clark, this is, this is a quote of hers as well. You know, we needed the time, and now we're getting down. Like, we needed the time to get to know each other. So much of playing basketball, as y'all know, is timing. It's, it's nonverbal communication. It's, you know, giving your teammate that eye, and they know what to do. That timing, you can't put it in a bottle. You can't put it in a sports drink. It comes with being together. It comes with playing together. And so the whole time, you know, it, and it's not something you can rush. So when people were losing their minds about what Caitlin was doing and what she wasn't doing, these people have never played basketball. I mean, straight up. They never played basketball. They don't understand. Stuff takes time. And that's just the individual side of the sport. So Caitlin's development was going to take some time. And Caitlin's development as it relates to her team was going to take some time. And the month and a couple of days of change that they got to work together, you know, as we saw from social media, Kaylin went to, had a little vacation, everybody had a little vacation, and they came back and went to work. And it shows. Timing is better. Chemistry. Oh, my goodness. Sometimes it, it's a rarity, but sometimes, yes, you can roll out a ball and people just click. They just, they just play well together. But most of the time, that does not happen. Most of the time, you got to get a sense for the sensibilities of your teammates. You got to get a sense for how they like to receive the ball. How they, All of those things take time. And midseason, before your team kind of gets out of it, is the best time for that stuff to come together. There are some teams in the standings right now that look like they, may, they might not be able to recover from what's happened in the first two two thirds of the season, but Fever, the Indiana Fever, is not one of those teams. They look like they could actually make a run, so it's gonna be fun. You know, it's gonna be really fun to watch what happens as Caitlin matures and as the people on the Indiana Fever, the other players on the Indiana Fever team, start to really come together and start looking very much like, if you will, like a, a Connecticut where they're running on all cylinders and, and everybody's making plays. That's what we're starting to see with the fever right right now. So, yeah, so those are my thoughts on the fever, <laughs> mainly on the fever and not the fever Phoenix game because, you know, it, it was a blowout at first uh, early in the game and then it got tight, but it was supposed to get tight because Phoenix is competitive and Phoenix is extremely talented. So it was supposed to get, it was supposed to become what it became in that game. But in the end, Fever won, and uh, and I like what I'm seeing, and I hope we keep seeing it. Let's make it competitive. This doesn't need to be a league where we already know who's going to win at the end. 
We don't. Not this season. We don't know who's going to win. So, Fever, keep it up. Everybody else get better. Let's go. Let's see the best that we got. What do you guys think? What do you think of the Fever game? What do you think of what's happening with the Fever and their development right now? That's all for now. Before you bounce, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and check out the merch. Ooh.